So, hello and welcome to another episode of Connecting Mindfully. I'm Emma Buggy and this is my friend Andy Hicks. Hello. And we are going to be talking to you today about the second part of a conversation that we started in our last episode around how to deal with that funky situation you can get into when one of you really wants reassurance from your partner. One of you really wants to know that they're not angry with you, that everything's okay at the end of an argument. And the other one just needs some space. The other one's just like, leave me alone. Give me some space. Back off. Right now, the last thing I need is to continue talking to you. (laughs) So we talked last time about the person who has the anxiety and that wants reassurance and that wants to reconnect and that helps them to soothe their nervous system. So if you haven't listened to that, have a listen to that episode first. This one, we're going to be focusing on the person who needs some space. Yes, and we thought we might start by, as as we're both people who are often on on the other side of the fence, the part the person that wants the reassurance, saying some of the judgments that we might have in the moment where you're communicating that you want space. Yeah, some of the judgments that you have towards the person who who's asking for space. Yeah. So I might well I might be judging myself. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I have done something wrong, I've upset them, I'm not good enough, I'm I'm, unlovable. I'm too needy. I'm too needy. I'm too much. (laughs) Um, And then I I might be judging them as well. You're being cold, um, you're being avoidant, you can't deal with conflict, you, you, you can't communicate. You don't care. You don't care. You can't, you're not giving me words. I need words from you. You're, why wouldn't you, why in frustration? Why wouldn't you give me the reassurance? What's wrong with you? You're selfish. It's really selfish. You're really selfish. Really selfish. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just hearing now that I'm not in one of those moments where I might be having those thoughts about my partner who needs space. I'm just noticing the pain of both sides of the party the person who wants the reassurance and the words in order to feel safe Mm. and also like how painful it is to have those thoughts about my partner who is also suffering Mm. the reason they need space is because they're also suffering so can you say a bit more andy what do you think it is that the person who wants space is really going through they're not selfish Mm. they're not incapable of connection they're not avoidant what is really their experience do you think If you're new to this podcast or if you've been following us for a while, I'd love to ask you to hit the follow button and share it with people that you know in your network. The reason for that is that it really supports us to get this message out to more people and that makes it more enjoyable for us to make the podcast episodes because we know that more people are hearing it and it makes it more sustainable because it reaches a, a wider audience. Yeah, definitely. Um, we also would like it if you came along to our event. Yeah. 16th and 17th of March, Connecting Mindfully. We're going to be covering a lot of the kinds of things that we talk about in these podcasts. So part of it is, the, is a focus on mindfulness and mindful self-compassion, how to deal with feelings of anger, shame, sadness, anxiety in a, in a more compassionate way. And... The other big component is NVC, so learning the principles, the basics of nonviolent communication as a way to deepen your relationships with other people, to navigate conflict more skillfully, to ask for what you want. And to learn the skill of active listening. Active listening. Yeah. Why is that important, Emma? It's important because we very often listen to each other in a defensive way or in order to respond with our own... No, I don't. Exactly, like he did, in order to respond with our stories, with our advice, with our solutions. Um, and that can very often get in the way of us really slowing down and hearing the deeper, more vulnerable, beautiful message that our partners or friends are trying to convey to us. Um, and learning that skill is a game changer when it comes to conflict, because rather than hearing the judgments that they have about us, we can hear what they're actually trying to say. Yeah. And we ran one a couple of weeks ago now. Yeah. And it was a smash hit. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. We loved it. It went really well. I got a lot of positive feedback, a lot of positive feedback. And um, it's based on courses that we've been running for quite some years now. So we'd love if you can come along. 
hit the follow button and have a look at the events page. If you have any questions, send us a message. Well, I think there could be a few different things that could be going on for them. One might be that having the argument, having the conflict brings up a lot of strong emotion mm. and maybe they need, there's somebody who needs space to process how they're feeling. Mm. Um, they might, that might be just generally how they deal with feeling strong emotion. It also might be that they think if I just carry on, if we just carry on having this communication, this argument with me feeling like this, it's not going to get us anywhere. Yeah. I feel the need to kind of calm down and soothe myself mm. and take some time before I re-engage and, and know what to say. And then mm. maybe we're going to have the that have the conversation in a more constructive way. Mm hmm. So there's there's some intelligence in that, isn't mm. there? There's a real intelligence in that. Like, I, I think very easily we can, those of us who are more um, coming from the anxious reactivity side of things um, can have a tendency to think the other person's need for space is them only avoiding conflict. And although that can be a response, and maybe in a minute we'll talk about real life examples so that we're bringing these again, theoretical pieces into something that's real and tangible. But the reality is that there might be, there might be a, this is too painful, I can't handle this, I just need to switch off and watch a TV show or do something to distract myself because I haven't learned how to be with pain and difficulty. I've learned that conflict is dangerous and scary in my past. And that witnessing conflict has put me in a very uh, uncomfortable place in my childhood and so I've learned to turn away and ignore and avoid my feelings as a way to protect myself from feeling that pain mm. so firstly if they are avoiding there's also an, in, an intelligence in the nervous system in the body um, that's trying to care for something that feels very vulnerable and very yeah. overwhelming and too much to cope with in this moment yeah. and so I really want to just firstly honour what that part of ourselves is doing when we avoid conflict mm. and even anxious people all people have an avoidant part of themselves mm. we all do this at certain moments so mm. <sighs> yeah just wanting to really honor that the tenderness behind that avoidance yeah so rather than it being like right i'm gonna selfishly withdraw my love from this person it's actually more like mm. oh i just want to feel safe yeah this is scary, I, mean, I feel overwhelmed, yeah. and, and I want to take some space, and maybe get under a duvet, get a, get, go into another room so that I can mm -hmm. reconnect to a feeling of being safe in my, in my own body. Yeah, and so that brings us into the other possibility, is that if you know someone goes into another room or needs space, it might be that they're choosing to avoid or to disconnect from the conflict watch a tv show do something to calm their nervous system or it may be that their way of processing emotion feels safer when they do it alone mm. they have gotten used to doing it alone which is more kind of the example that you gave it might be i need to go hide under a blanket i need mm. to go and cry on my own i need mm. to experience the anger on my own. I need to go and smash something up. I need to go and journal on my own. Mm. But the doing it alone part is what adds to their feeling of safety mm. because that's what they've gotten used to. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if we have maybe an example that we can work with Andy just so that we're talking about real life mm. and then we might, um, yeah, see if there's anything else that comes out of that as a, an awareness of the experience of the person who's taking space um, before we go into how that person who needs space can communicate their needs and what they might do when they take space in order to care for their emotional experience and help themselves to regulate in a, in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. well, do you have an example of where you were on the other side of the fence and you did actually, you were the one that wanted space? Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally, many. Um, yeah, yeah. I find that very often in friendships, so in romantic relationships in the past, it's been more often that I'm the one who responds with anxiety and that needs the reassurance. But in friendships, it has, it's turned up very many, many, many times that I'm the one that just needs space. Um, and yeah, <sighs> I just want to land on an example that comes to mind. 
So I remember that there was a particular friend that was reaching out for connection Mm -hmm. and wanted to meet up and was feeling hurt around the fact that it had been some months since we'd seen each other, Mm. since we connected. And if there's any of my friends listening, don't worry. Um, This has happened with a few different people, so I'm not... um, uh, If you're thinking it's you, it might be you, but it may also be um, a few other people (laughs) in my life because this is not a one-off occurrence. Mm. Um, So, yeah, I'm remembering that they wanted to... They were expressing in their message that they were annoyed that they had reached out a few times to connect and I had said yes, maybe, and this and that. And I hadn't really expressed clearly the fact that I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to um, connect at that time. I I needed space. I wanted to um, take my time around finding moments for us to connect. I felt overwhelmed with other parts of my life and other relationships and didn't feel a full yes in my nervous system for us to be connecting in the way that this person wanted to. And I remember that there were certain moments where I was just kind of wanting to to shut off from responding to that person and just ignore the message and not get back to them. And just hope that by not responding, it will go away and they'll Mm. get the message. (laughs) By not being clear with my communication. If I just ignore the the third or fourth time that they've asked me to hang out, maybe they'll get the message. Looking back a few years now, I feel real sadness that that's what I thought would support me to get that space. Mm. But what I really needed then was for the other person to see the fact that I I just needed space for me to find my own clarity. I wasn't clear yet, as I am now, about what I needed. I wasn't able to yet say to them, I'm not sure that I want to invest in this connection right now. Um, I want to pr- bring my attention to other relationships. I'm overwhelmed with other things in my life. I didn't yet have that clarity Mm. and I needed some space and time, like maybe some weeks or something or some days just to go into my own space and feel into it. And without that kind of second or third request in a row building up, Mm. feel into what do I actually want? What, Mm. what's right for Emma? Mm -hmm. Um, And with the skills that I have now, I feel confident that I can communicate that to somebody Mm. And say, I'm not sure what I want here. I might need some weeks to feel into this. Are you okay if I get back to you in a few weeks um, once I've just had a bit of space to feel into my body Mm -hmm. and let you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I think without me communicating that, it's very hard for the other person to understand it, isn't it? Because then they're just left in this like, what's going on? Yeah. Why haven't they responded? Why good? are they being vague? Yeah. Why is Emma not telling this? Her 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 responses don't make sense. It doesn't feel mm. clear. What mm. she does she not care about me? Does she not care. I'm not important to her. I'm yeah. Not priority. She's hot and cold. Mm. She's yes, we'll hang out some point, but then she's not saying when, and she's not yeah, committing to anything. She's flaky. She's flaky. Yeah. So it's very uncomfortable for the other person if I'm not being clear with my yeah. with my needs if I'm not saying I actually need some space hmm. so I just wanted to take a step back for a moment and um, just make the point that this can come up in different kinds of scenarios so yeah. we've, go- we've given the scenario of there's an argument between people that are in a romantic relationship in the last podcast in the last podcast we've, you're physically together and then one of you wants to physically move away mm-hmm. and then you've got the situation where your friends you're not physically in the same space one of them is saying i want to connect mm-hmm. i want to spend time with you mm-hmm. and the other person's thinking in this case you i'm mm, not sure if i want to do that mm-hmm. um so different kinds of relationships different scenarios but both times one of you saying i want connection the other person's wanting space yes yeah exactly and if you haven't yet listened to the other episode i just want to reiterate what i said there it's one of the most common points of conflict or discomfort and disconnection that i come across 
in relationships with couples, with individuals, with groups that I work with, with families. It is literally the number one top, most common scenario, which is why you might have heard different variations of it in other po- podcast episodes of mine, because it, it just keeps coming up. It's so common. Yeah. Um, so it needs more and more kind of unpacking and understanding, mm. I think. Mm. Yeah, so common. I experienced it in my life and my friends and my clients. So in this situation, their story might be, she doesn't care about me or she's Mm -hmm. flaky, she's unreliable. But what's going on for you is you just want to be clear of what you actually want. Do I want to spend time with this person or not? Yeah, and I'm not yet clear. And I'm not yet clear. And I, what what helps me to find that clarity is to have a bit of space on my own to feel into my own body mm. rather than what my, my attachment system or my nervous system is used to is I'll do what they want mm-hmm. or what they need in order to please them yep. so that I don't experience the perceived wrath of their anger or hurt or pain yeah. when I don't do what they want. And I think this is also an experience of people that um, that sometimes takes space is that they can be it's not only but they can be sometimes in the in the people pleasing category maybe at some point in their life that that's what they've done and now they're trying to do the opposite to retreat in order to care for their own needs because they haven't yet learned a way where they can care for their own needs and hold healthy boundaries whilst expressing a no mm. and taking space um, and caring for the other, but without being responsible for the other. Mm-hmm. That's quite a balancing act. I'm imagining if I'm, I think my, if I, th- I, I think we're friends and yeah. I'm getting from you, actually, I'm not really sure if I want to spend time with you. Yeah. That's quite a hard message to hear. It is. Yeah. So how can you find a way to communicate what's going on for you in that moment in a way that is caring for me as someone who's, I'm at risk of feeling quite hurt by you saying, actually, I'm not really sure if I enjoy your company enough, or you're mm. enough, you're important to me enough that I really want to make time for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how can I communicate it in a way that's really caring for your experience hmm. whilst also being honest and real and not sugarcoating it? Yeah, and, I, and I'm partly asking because I think I have a tendency to just say, yes, <laughs> yeah. I will spend time with you. And then spread myself really thinly because I'm not being really selective or clear exactly who I most want to spend time with. Mm. And then that can feel a bit exhausting or dissatisfying or just having lots of Mm -hmm. friends that I see a little bit of Mm -hmm. because I don't find the words to be to be really honest and clear. Yeah. Yeah, and I just notice immediately like a nervousness in me to even suggest this because I just want to recognize how vulnerable it is to both be so honest Mm. about what you need Mm. in the fear that it might hurt the other person or they might feel hurt Mm. whilst being true to yourself. So claiming your honesty and staying compassionate is a vulnerable thing to do. It can be a very vulnerable thing to do. Mm. And it's very vulnerable for the other person sometimes, not always, but sometimes to receive your honesty if they hear it as you don't care. And I really want to bring in this like real um, commitment to what's really my truth, even if it will will be painful for the other person, Whilst I care for their response, I care for their pain, I'm not going to take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. Because if I take responsibility for it, I might start altering my truth and sugarcoating it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I lose myself in the relationship. And that's where trust gets broken on both sides. Because I stop trusting you that I can bring myself fully. Because I have to sugarcoat things in order for you to not get angry with me. Right? So I lose trust in you if I have to walk on eggshells whilst trying to be honest. And you lose trust in me if you're sensing that I'm not telling you the whole truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like you want to be able to communicate it in a way that trust that I can deal with it if you don't want to spend time with me. Yeah. And that will mean that I trust that you are actually being honest. 
Yeah. And if you can't deal with it and you get upset with me, can I hold the part of me that is like, oof, it's painful to receive your hurt, to see you in pain. I notice the part of me that wants to now sugarcoat things and make things better and reassure you just because I don't want to feel the pain of you not liking me mm-hmm. right now. You don't yeah. like me because because I'm not doing what you want. And at the same time, that's that reaction is your responsibility. Yeah. And I can't control it. I can't yeah. change the way that you react. Yeah. I can only make choices around how I express and how I care for things and what goes on in me. Your reaction to my reaction is your responsibility. Yes. If you feel guilty or if you feel worried, that's yours to deal with. Yeah. And when I say that it's mine to deal with and that's yours to deal with, it doesn't mean I don't care for your response. It's like I care deeply for your response. I care for your experience, but I'm not taking responsibility for it. It's not my fault that you responded in that way. Mm-hmm. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, because so. it can. Because I. Because it can. When you hear about. When you hear someone talking about it, it can sound like, oh, I'm just having to cut myself off from caring. Yeah. That's not my job to care to to deal with your feelings. Yeah. But your actually, feelings are yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, could we imagine a, the actual scenario where mm. it's been maybe a few weeks and I'm texting you. You've texted me a few times. I texted you two, three, four times and you've said, I'm not you know, busy at the moment, maybe in, in a little while. And I'm like, Emma, hi, Emma. It's, what about this weekend? Are you free? I'd really love to see you. Yeah. And in this scenario, you don't want to. I don't want to, even if I have the weekend free. Yeah. Oh, so I'm just slowing down to really bring myself into that. And imagining that you're asking me that now, I notice my first response is like a f- slight feeling of sickness in my stomach mm. when I imagine being honest with you. Yeah. Um, and that feeling of sickness is saying something like, oh shit, they're not going to like what I have to say. That's the story I'm, I'm telling myself. I'm assuming that you won't like what I have to say. Yeah. Um, it might be true that actually I'm honest with you and, and it's a relief for mm. you because you don't have to keep asking. <laughs> yeah. But I believe that you won't like what I've got to say. Yeah. And I think it would sound something like this. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to look at you imagining that that you sent me, maybe you sent me a text message or you're sitting with me and you're like, hey Emma, we haven't met in a while. Do you want to say that just to help me connect with it? Like, yeah, hey sure. Emma, we haven't met in a while. Hey Emma, we haven't met in, in a while and I'd really love to see you. How about Saturday? Maybe we could go for a walk in the park. Would you mm. like to do that? Yeah, so Annie, I noticed that I feel nervous um, responding to this because I I care about your feelings and you've asked me a couple of times now if we want to hang out. And um, like I do care about our connection. There's something that keeps me connected and we hang out and we have good times when we're together in group scenarios with friends and stuff. But when I imagine us meeting on Saturday, Mm. I notice that I feel stressed. Mm. And that's because in this moment, I have a lot of different people that I'm trying to connect with in my life and also many different projects that I'm doing. And I also want to balance that with self-care. And I'm struggling to find that balance Mm. if I say yes to each friend that wants to meet up mm. on the weekend. And I think I'd rather this weekend take time for myself. And I also mm. don't know if if I will have the wish to, to meet regularly in the future. I'm currently really enjoying when we see each other in friendship groups, mm. um, but I, I just don't have a clarity in me in this moment that I, that I really wanna make a date for us to meet in person. And I wonder how that is for you to receive. Uh, there's a, there's a sadness that comes up it's like oh she she doesn't want to to see me right now, and there's also a sense of like understanding of like okay she's got a lot of things going on. There's a slight mm-hmm. judgment of like oh she thinks she's in, in demand with all these. She's got so many friends who want to see her. Yeah. But there's also yeah there's there's an understanding of like okay yeah she's she she doesn't have the space to see me at the moment Mm -hmm. and even if she did maybe she'd want to take that time just to have the space Mm -hmm. and that's okay i can i can understand that i can deal with that yeah yeah 
Yeah. So like you have the experience of maybe is it like a relief that you receive my honesty and that there's like you're hearing the truth of what's going on for me and you understand that I need space. And at the same time, it hurts a bit when I kind of say that I have lots of people that I want to hang out with and maybe it touches. I wonder if it touches a painful point in you like well how come i'm not one of the people yeah. that she prioritizes yeah there is there is pain around that like oh i'm not one of the most important people in her life and i would like to be because actually i see her as one of the more important people the people mm-hmm. i like seeing so yeah that is that isn't a nice thing to hear yeah yeah so it's painful because it leaves that kind of t- aftertaste of you're not a priority to me mm yeah yeah it does it does yeah so in this moment in the conversation i would say that this goes into a deeper layer of our friendship Mm. and if i wanted to and i had space to engage in that i would i would then make a time for us to care for the things that are showing up between us that make me less interested in spending Mm. time with Andy. Mm. Because probably it's pointing towards there's something in me that's going, I don't quite like it when Andy does this and that, or Mm. I'm not feeling as connected when he does this and that, and that's why I don't want to have as much time with you. Mm -hmm. So I would then consider taking this into a deeper conversation around what are the things that make me retreat more? If I want to do that... If I feel like there's enough uh, of an impetus and a wish in me to go into that conversation with you, Mm. I would do that. Mm. And there's times when I don't want to do it because Mm. it's, it's, um, for example, someone who I... I just have, it's, it's, it's an acquaintance who I've met a few times and I don't want to invest that much into mm. the connection. Mm. It doesn't even feel joyful for me to invest that much time in having a, a, a face-to-face honest conversation. So in that case, I would probably just leave it there. Mm. Um, and, or I, or I might, or I might even have a, another layer of honesty, which is just, you know, I might say something like, I'm just connecting with it so that it's not coming from the mind and it's more coming from my body. So I'm imagining um, another another response. So imagining that we're starting from the beginning again. Um, and you're asking to connect with me and I need physical space. <sighs> yeah, I think I might just say um, similarly, but slightly different, Um, I'm noticing something uncomfortable in me um, that wants to be expressed and I'm imagining that it might be uncomfortable for you to hear. Mm. Um, I care for that discomfort in you, so I'm hoping that you'll just let me know if it is uncomfortable. Mm. But my truth is that when I imagine us spending time outside of these group situations, I don't have a full yes to that because I want to put my focus in other places and... I, I just don't feel a pull towards bringing more attention into our connection. Mm. It doesn't, it, I don't feel like a natural pull there. Mm. And I really want to be authentic and honest with you and not to, mm. like it's, I enjoy the connections when we, when we meet and that feels like enough for me right mm. now. Mm. I wonder how that is for you to hear. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. <laughs> there is, I, I appreciate honesty. There is a bit of like, oh, I wish you did feel more of a pull, mm-hmm. but I can, I can accept what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would say, that's all I have space for right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but if this comes up again between us, I'd like you to tell me, and then mm. I will check in and see if I have space to dive deeper or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think you could tell me if that came up again in our connection? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> Yeah, so you, I, there's a choice point, isn't there, of if I'm not enjoying spending time with somebody, do we talk about that? And do we try to find ways of making it more enjoyable? Or do I just say, I'd rather not spend time together? Yeah. And it might depend, it depend on the context, the, the history maybe with that yeah, person. Exactly. Is it a new person in your life? 
Is it someone you used to enjoy spending time with? Yeah, because I, I want to bring in the, the, the concept of consent, because mm-hmm. we think we, we use the word consent a lot when we're talking about physical boundaries, like, can I touch you? Yeah. But we, I, I want to bring in emotional consent and time consent. Um, how do I value my time? How do I value the space where I put emotional um, um, awareness and attention to? Mm. And it's a very fine line between uh, am I avoiding going into the difficult things versus am I just really listening to my body and saying, no, this is a, this is a clear no for now. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I, don't, I don't want to stretch myself into finding a yes. Mm-hmm. Because if I do that, then we're both going to suffer from that. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to feel good for either of us. Yeah. Yeah. I want to take a a moment to breathe. Because I'm I'm also imagining maybe it could be supportive, Andy, um, if you have an example where um, it's coming up in conflict or in a relationship that's more immediate, I need space now. Yeah. Because I think that might be helpful for people who are listening. Yeah. So maybe I'll... uh... I'll have a go at imagining what I might say if I was the person that wanted space. And then as um, you've done a lot more NVC training <laughs> than me, <laughs> I'd be really interested to see see how you... Would formulate that. How you might, form, how you might um, formulate it differently to what, mm. I, was, what I would come up with. Mm-hmm. Before so, you say that, just for people who might be tuning in first time, NVC is an acronym for nonviolent communication, which is also compassionate, authentic relating. And... You have a lot of experience in mindful self-compassion. I do. So I think that really adds to the communication piece. So I also really value how you bring that in as well. Thanks, Emma. So. So I might, if I'm imagining, I am, I've walked away from the person I'm having an argument with. And I've taken some space. And they are coming into the room saying, can we talk about this? Can we talk about it now? And I really don't want to because I'm feeling maybe I'm feeling really angry. And I know that if we talk about it now, I'm not, it's not going to get us anywhere. Mm. So I might say to them, hear that you want to talk about this right now. You want to you want to find a way to resolve it. I'm currently feeling really upset. Mm. I'm feeling frustrated about the conversation we've just been having feel a bit hurt from some of the things that have been that you said and what I think I need right now for us to be able to talk about it constructively to reconnect um is it's just some space so that I can I can calm myself down I might I might meditate I, I just need some time and then when I'm feeling a bit calmer I would like to talk about it mm-hmm. with you because of course I want to reconnect I want to try to find some some resolution to what what we've been talking about but can you just give me maybe half an hour an hour and then I'll come Mm. back and and have a chat with you about it how Mm. how would that be for you Mm. so I love that and my response is okay so it's been an hour (laughs) (laughs) and I'm the anxious person waiting in the other room and I'm like has he finished yet? And is he going to come and find me? Or do I have to go and find him? <laughs> What's going to happen? So that it might be that, that actually that's enough. And that calms my nervous system, gives me the predictability or the care that I need. And I really felt like you're caring for the relationship in, mm. in saying it in that mm. way. Um, but let's say the other, like it could be this is a huge argument and there's a real rift. Mm. Um, it might be that I'm then waiting that whole hour or that I don't know who's going to come to who first. So what else might you say, or do you want me to have a go at it? What else might you say in order to care for the fact that you you don't know how long you're going to need? It mm. might be an hour, but it could mm. be you need a whole day. Or yeah, a week. You don't know, or a week, or whatever it is. So like, w- what could you do to care for that unpredictability of time and support me in in knowing that, that the connection still matters and that you will mm. be coming back at some point mm. um, so that I'm not just sitting there in that waiting position, which is also my responsibility. Mm. But we talked about that in the last episode. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, good question. Because maybe there's part of me that is giving the time um, boundary of half an hour to an hour that is doing that from a place of, oh, I just want to make sure that you're not going to be in a discomfort for too long. Yeah. Rather than the truth of the fact that I don't actually know how long it's going to take before yeah. I'm ready to talk about this. And I might want to speak to a friend first who's not available yeah. or I might, might want to speak to my therapist or have have much longer than an hour go for a hike go somewhere. for a hike <laughs> <laughs> absolutely go to the gym and punch a punching bag I don't know <laughs> exactly exactly yeah so I guess I might say um I would like some space to be able to calm down and deal with how I'm feeling about the situation mm. before we talk about it again and I don't actually know how long I'm going to need but I am going to want to talk about this again. I am going to want to mm-hmm. to reconnect. Just so you know, I'm not saying I'm never going to talk about it. I do want to, just not right now. And I will let you know when I'm ready to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So the anxious part of me wants to know that we're caring for that unknown together mm-hmm. and would somehow want to hear from you. Like, and, and And this can come from either one of us in this negotiation of what feels like a way that we can hold the fact that you need space and I need reassurance together. So either I can say it as the anxious person or you can offer it as the person who needs space. Um, and maybe I give I give both per- both versions. So as the anxious person, I might say something like, okay, that's cool. What doesn't work for me is really not knowing at all how long it's going to be. Would you be willing to, for example, take three hours now? Mm. And if you think you need more than that, just send me a message saying I need another day or Mm. I need another. And then so at least I know between each point Mm -hmm. how long it is that I can be waiting before you're going to get back to me. So that it's not like it could be a month and Mm. I don't hear from you. Mm -hmm. Um, that kind that supports me to know that you're taking care of your your time and your need to go and have space as long as you need, um, and at the same time you're still aware that I'm that that there's there's me on the other side that wants to know that we're going to have the conversation at some point, mm-hmm. or even if we're not going to have the conversation, you're just going to come back and and reconnect with me in some way. Yeah, so that feels like a, a no pressure way to kind of give you the give you the reassurance that you need. If I just have to say yeah. in three hours time, whether or not I'm ready yet, and I can let you know actually, you no, know, I'm going to need until tomorrow, and then yeah. I'll let you know how I'm feeling tomorrow. Yeah, I can sort of keep you updated about when yeah. I'm ready to talk about it. Yeah, you can update me, and you can be really clear that that I'm not going to be in contact during the time that I'm not updating. I'm only going to update you to let you know how much more time I need and, and see if that's okay, you know? Um, so, yeah, and that can be done on both sides. So you could you could equally offer that to me. You could equally say, I'm going to take this space and this is when I'll update you about yeah. whether I'm ready or not, mm. if I need more time or not. I just want to bring in one more example of where this can be really handy because it's it's come up a lot um, in relationships um, for myself. I remember during a period where I was going through um, miscarriage, actually, um, which was really difficult. And I just and my partner was working. My partner was at work. He was working as a tour guide and he had loads and loads of clients. And he was trying to, to, to do that and keep us financially floating at the beginning of COVID whilst I was kind of bleeding out. And it was really, really, really difficult. And we weren't in the same place. And it was a lot of complexity to the situation. But I just needed constant reassurance. And I um, to know that that he is there with me in that moment. And I, I, and he was feeling overwhelmed with the responsibility and care towards me, but also towards his work and trying to care for both of us financially mm. at that time. And I think what I would have loved to have set up between us, which we didn't have the skills to do then, <laughs> um, but what I would have loved to have set up between us is something like me saying to him, I'm going through a ridiculously vulnerable moment this is so hard Mm. and the reality is that we're not together I also know that you're at work and therefore you cannot you're a tour guide you're with clients you cannot just be on your phone messaging and calling me all of the time Um, 
what would support me is to have something like a a system in place where I know that we are connecting and that my experience of what I'm going through is still being cared for whilst you're also given the space to go and do the things that you need to do. And I'm and and I'm imagining my request to him as the anxious person could be something like, would you be willing to send me a, a message on your lunch break to say mm. that you're thinking of me? Mm. Just a picture and I love you and thinking mm. of you. Um, would you be willing to send me a message at the end of the day checking in on how I am and if you need space, just letting me know when you'll be available, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And although he... He kind of did those things anyway. I needed to know that we would have that system in place in order for that anxiety in me to to have that predictability um, in that moment. I'm curious if that feels also like something that you, you can relate to when there's a moment of tension in the relationship, needing that more regular contact in those moments. Mm. Well, my first reaction is just to really appreciate the the clarity and simplicity of if I'm your partner, what I'm being asked to do. Yeah. It's, I'm like, of course, that's such a simple thing. That's it's, it's easy for me to do that. Yeah. I can, and I can imagine if you, you're not asking that, resentment building up. Yeah. Like, well, what do you want me to do? Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I feel like you're asking the world of me when I'm busy and overwhelmed and I've got all this work yeah. to do and I can't mm-hmm. be there for you and you're asking mm-hmm. me to be there for you at the same time. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're just so specific, oh, yeah. this is the thing that would help me to yeah. know that you're caring for me, you're thinking of me, that we're connected. Yeah. Of course I can do that for you. Yeah. <laughs> so by me asking, it creates that real natural wish to say yes because I'm being clear and it's doable. Yeah, a natural wish to say yes and there's a sense of ease in the relationship. Mm. Like, ah, oh, it's not all so difficult and complicated. <laughs> She's making it simple. She just wants me. a little bit, a little thingy. <laughs> a little message. Yeah. Yeah, thank God for that. <laughs> Equally, though, I think there's a part of me that wants to know what would, like, like I want to care for asking for what I need. Mm. And also, if we switch it around, what would be your responsibility in recognising that I'm going through a really, really difficult thing there? Mm. Um, let's not use the miscarriage because I I, somehow I, I want to keep it separate. But just imagining that we're in a conflict Um what would be your role as the person who needs space, you're at work or you're doing something and you can't answer right now um, in recognising that maybe I need more reassurance and what could you do to initiate that conversation? So what could you do to initiate the fact that you need space and this Mm. is how you will offer reassurance in a way that feels yes, like a full yes for you? Mm -hmm. So imagining that I'm aware that you want this kind of care and attention mm-hmm. and support and, yeah. I, and, and I'm feeling like, well, I don't really have capacity to give it right now. Yeah, and I, maybe I haven't communicated it. And you haven't... Commu- you haven't you, you I haven't, have or I haven't, either okay. way, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I might say something like, um, that I know you're going through a really painful, difficult, emotional time right now and there's this big part of me that wants to be there at your side mm. all the time at the moment. Mm. And at the same time, I know that if I do that, we're not going to have any money to live off yeah. and to care for each other. So I am going to be at work. I'm going to be doing this intense job all day. It doesn't mean that I'm not thinking of you. It doesn't mean I'm not caring about you. I'm there because I want to care for you yeah. financially. And when I come back from work, I'm going, I'm going to be fully available to, to, to support you and, and care for you. Oh, Andy, those are the words that I'd wished I'd heard. And (laughs) it's just so, I'm really, really, really noticing. I feel very touched by that, very seen, very cared for. Um, Yeah, there's something so sweetly reassuring and kind and honest and open and telling me that you do care. And, and yet being very clear that it's not going to happen whilst we're, I'm at work because I can't. When I come home, I'll be there for you. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's one, one last kind of option I'd like to weave in because, I, again, I notice it's something I would have liked in past situations. Mm-hmm. 
and that is that if um, for example, in that situation, I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit hypothetical here, this didn't really happen, but like, for example, in that situation, another thing that I'd like to hear from you, in case I haven't asked for what I need, and we're trying to care for this together, um, is, is something like, like, say it's not the miscarriage, but it's, we're, we're having an argument, and it's like, I I know that you would like to hear from me during the day because you're worried that I'm just disconnecting and that I don't care about you. Yeah. And yes, I do need my space. I need my space in order for me to focus on work or this other thing that I'm doing, or I need my space in order to self-connect, whatever it is. I just need that space. Mm. And at the same time, I do care for the fact that, that what helps you to feel valued and what helps you to feel safe and to know that you matter to me is when I am connecting with you. Mm. So what feels like a full yes for me mm. is that I have my space when I'm at work and at lunchtime I'm happy to send you a little picture or a little this of how I am mm. and then at the end of the day um, to send another message to check in with you. Mm. Um, how does that feel for you? If I'm the person that wants that connection and yeah, reassurance, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that feels that feels really yeah. mature and respectful of your time and you, your focus. Yeah, and also I get to have that connection and that that sort of reassurance that I want. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that feels great. Mm -hmm. And then maybe just one alliteration is like, it, this can happen very often where the, the, the person who's feeling more anxious might send many messages, two, three, four, five, six, seven messages yeah. and be like, why aren't you answering me? Yeah. So again, I can bring clarity and say, the reason I'm not answering you is because I'm at work and I'm focusing. And I feel very stressed at the idea of responding to you when I'm focusing on other things because then I'm not bringing my attention fully either to you or to the thing that I'm doing yeah. I'd much rather give you my attention when I'm fully there yeah. and I'd love to know that I'd love you to know that I care about you yeah. and and also for me to to take the space that I need so what I will do when you next message me those times is I might put my my phone on silent and I'm mm. just not going to check it mm. I'm not going to check it until the end of the day mm. Um, and if that brings up anxiety in you, I'm happy to hear about it at the end of the day. But I want you to know that that's what I'm going to be doing mm -hmm. because I cannot um, function at work and respond to the messages at the same time. It's like I lose focus either with you or with, with work and mm -hmm. that feels stressful for me. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you can understand my experience. And if yeah, totally. And I don't want to be getting in the way of you doing a good job at work or being focused. I don't want to create more stress for you. So I can totally understand that. And yeah, as long as I'm getting to hear from you at some point, mm -hmm. I don't expect an immediate response. Lunchtime or the end of the day. Mm. That's okay. Great. So we'll check in at the end of, uh, of the working day. Yeah. Cool. Andy, is there anything else you'd like to add to this uh, episode on how to be the person who is asking for space in the relationship? Not how to be, but ways that you can uh, react, respond, ask for space as the person who needs more space in the relationship. Maybe just a, a reflection that it might be very tempting or automatic to... to to do to just be a bit cold or to push someone away in a bit of a fr frustrated or judgmental way and that with a bit of thought and reflection there are ways of asking for what we want in a, in a way that makes people want to give it to us a lot more mm. and that creates more connection and there are ways of doing it that, that sort of inflames the situation and makes it worse mm. makes it feel more disconnected and what I feel kind of inspired about mm. talking through some of these examples is finding these more skillful ways through mm. that's clearer how you're feeling. It's clearer what yeah. you want, what your needs. It's about bringing more clarity. Yeah. And the cl the, the, that clarity can bring more simplicity, ease, connection, mm. harmony, uh, can make it just less, less scary yeah. for the person that really wants you to give them attention and time. Yeah, yeah. And it can help you to feel more relaxed, more safe, because you know, rather than being lost in the stories in your head, that you yeah. think 
like the stories I get lost in when I'm feeling anxiety is they don't care about me, they don't love me, blah, 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 blah. whereas when you just tell me what's going on for you, then I'm like, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, yeah. And it's like, how can we break away from the tendency to just push the situation away, avoid being expressive, mm. um, getting angry with them, telling them that they're too much, getting frustrated with this annoying, needy person that I'm judging them to be a needy person and actually bring first compassion to the anxiety that they're experiencing and compassion towards myself for why I need space. And from there, we can communicate and find a way that works for everyone. Beautiful. Great. And if you would like to find some ways to put this into practice in your life, yes. through doing some exercises around it, through working on it in a group, come to our in-person oh. workshop, 16th yes. and 17th of March, Connecting Mindfully, and we're gonna be practicing some of these exact things around mm -hmm. communicating your feelings and needs in a non-judgmental way, a little bit on making requests. Yes. And having practicing meditations and using tools that help you to be self-compassionate in those moments mm. when these difficult feelings come up. Yeah, so it's both supportive for that person who'd be in the anxious kind of perspective, bringing more and more self-soothing in and awareness to the stories that we're holding in our mindset that keep us stuck in anxiety. Um, and then also for the person that's maybe feeling more judgmental towards that anxious person that needs more space and that's just like, oh, conflict is annoying. How can we lean in? How can we find out what it is that we need? How can we express ourselves more clearly? Yeah. Exactly. And also, if you're interested in working with either of us one-on-one, -on -one, we do private sessions. I work with couples and individuals around relationships. I support people to communicate with more clarity. Um, and Andy? And I teach people simple, powerful, mindfulness-based tools that help them to be more self-compassionate, to be more accepting of their emotions and their mind. And help that, 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 that in turn also helps them to connect more with more ease um, and care with the people around them yeah and with themselves and with themselves so all the links are in the podcast notes follow us and we will speak to you again soon bye for now bye